Welcome to the Pharmacy Inspection Podcast, brought to you by Visant Consulting, where we discuss topics related to all things pharmacy compliance. Now, please welcome your host, board certified compounding pharmacist, Seth De Pasquale. Hello and welcome to the Pharmacy Inspection Podcast, brought to you by Visant. We are very happy to be coming to you again with the Pharmacy Inspection Podcast, sort of a reboot of what I've done before uh, previously, and sort of the same format and setup. We're, we're going to be basically doing a 5 to 15 minute podcast where we talk about Um, compliance issues related to compounding, um, which is definitely my my area of expertise, but we also may get into other areas, bring on some other other, uh, people, other uh, subject matter experts in other areas of pharmacy uh, related to compliance in, in, and again, other areas of pharmacy. And we're we're really excited about this. We hope that uh, you get a lot from what we're going to be doing here. So let's get started. This week, we're going to be talking about the USP revisions of 795. Uh, We're just going to cover 795 this week really quick. I'm just going to go through a really quick run through of some of the most important and pertinent um, changes that are in this new revised chapter. And I have to say, to be totally honest with you, that the uh, USP Compounding Expert Committee has really done their homework. They were put to task by uh, several appeals brought forth by pharmacies and organizations that, you know, raised their hand and said, whoa, 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 wait, let's let's get a little bit of of uh, actual data behind what you're saying in terms of the beyond use dates. So that's, but that's not the only thing that's, that's changed in the, in the USP 795 revision. There has been a whole bunch of changes and let's go over some of those changes right now. So first of all, the personnel training and evaluation. Now, in, in the previous iterations of, of USP 795 and 797, it's been really light on quality assurance and quality control. And as a part of that, uh, personnel training and evaluation is, is actually uh, sort of a, a quality control step, quality assurance um, that you're assuring that your operators are competent and know what they're doing and are able to perform consistently over and over and over again at whatever task um, you have or you're having them do. So um, in 795, there's core competencies that must be met uh, and demonstrated um, at least every 12 months. And these core competencies include hand hygiene, garbing, cleaning and sanitization, are cleaning and sanitizing, handling and transporting components and CNSPs or compounded and non-sterile preparations, measuring and mixing, proper use of equipment and devices selected to compound uh, non-sterile preparations, and documentation of the compounding process, i.e. Uh, the master formulation and compounding record. So these core competencies are all really you know, pretty important to the overall process of, of, of compounding, not just for non-sterile compounding, but for sterile compounding as well. But again, we're, we're trying to focus here this week on, on non-sterile compounding. So the, the things, the, some of the other things that the chapter mentions that they want people, compounders to be, uh, to understand and, and know is, um, and, and these are just bullet points. Read and understand this chapter, other applicable standards, and other relevant literature. Understand and interpret safety data sheet sheets or SDSs, and if applicable, certificates of analysis or COAs. 
and also read and understand procedures related to their compounding duties. So they're really getting to the heart of the fact that they want compounders to be competent in the tasks they're performing. They really need to step up their game in terms of having a, a real training program for 795. Now, to date, there really isn't uh, a great training program out there for 795. Um, there, I, I'm, I'm actually uh, in the process of developing one. <laughs> um, that's going to be much like my my sterile compounding one that is video based and uh, and uh, kind of shows you how to do certain certain things. Uh, including uh, working some of the equipment that we use for, for compounding non-sterile preparations. Um, the cleaning uh, and sanitizing uh, of, of the work area that where, where we do non-sterile compounding has also been increased. So we, we really have to kind of keep a clean area. And I should also mention here that um, the FDA just recently came out with a guidance document pertaining to non-sterile compounding and non-sterile manufacturing related to micro, microbiological uh, detection uh, in, in the work area where you're performing um, non-sterile compounding. And, and it's, it's worth a read because it's certainly pertinent to what we're doing as well and speaks a lot to why um, it's so important to actually keep and maintain a clean work area in your, in your non-sterile area, just as, just as clean as, maybe not just as clean, but, uh, but fairly clean uh, compared to your, your sterile operation. So, you know, floors uh, are going to be cleaned on a daily basis. Uh, work surfaces are going to be cleaned at the beginning uh, and, and end of each shift after spills when surface contamination is known or suspected. Um, also between compounding non-sterile preparations with different components. The wall ceilings and storage uh, are, are going to be cleaned on a every three month basis. So walls every three months after spills, excuse me, and when surface contamination is known or suspected. And then ceilings are gonna be cleaned when visibly soiled. So I misspoke before that these don't have to be cleaned every three months according to the standard. They're, they're to be cleaned when visibly soiled and when surface contamination is known or suspected. And storage and shelving is every three months uh, or after spills and when surface contamination is known or suspected. Um, the other the other areas in in 785 that really um, are are boosted up and and brought more to the forefront is like I, I kind of said at the top here, quality assurance and quality control. And part of that quality assurance and quality control, of course, is, is training, is going to be documentation, uh, keeping good records. Um, so the, the documentation that I'm talking about has to do with your calibration records and maintenance reports, uh, certification reports of any engineering controls if you're using them. And, and if you're, if you're compounding with, with loose powder, you should definitely be using engineering controls. Um, and then, you know, you should also have quality controls in place to detect, uh, any, any area of the compound that has to do with safety, the ingredient purity, potency or the quality of the preparation of the final preparation anything that has to do with those five things um, you should really at any point during the compounding process if you have a control a quality control in place let's let's say for instance weighing and measuring 
So um, in, in weighing, you have a scale or a balance, and most people are using electronic scales, and they um, you should be performing a, a calibration and also a test to, to measure whether or not uh, the accuracy of the, um, of the device is, is, is accurate. <laughs> and how do you do that? Uh, specifically, just if we're talking about, um, if we're talking about scales, we're, we're going to be using, uh, weights to do that. And we're going to be looking at, uh, the linearity of the scale. So we'll put one weight on maybe that's, that's five grams, for instance, then we'll put a, another weight that's supposed to be, I don't know, 20 grams, then a hundred grams, then maybe 200 grams. And each point, if you picture those, those measurements on a graph, each point should be very close to, to the actual weight, um, that you're putting on the scale. So, um, and, and, so you're, you're one measuring accuracy to see whether or not the weight is, is actually what the weight should be that is on the scale. And you're measuring linearity to see if you have a, a linear line, um, that goes, you know, up, uh, because you're, you're measuring weights weighing anywhere from five to 200 grams. So there should be a, a very, nice straight line that goes across the, uh, if you, again, if you're picturing a graph, a nice straight line that goes across and, and proves that the scale is measuring in a, in a linear fashion. So that's just one example of a quality control. Um, again, anything just to, just to remind you, anything that, um, is going to affect the quality, safety, ingredient, purity and potency of the final preparation, there should be a quality control check in place to ensure that the compound is meeting specification. So um, the a couple other things you should maybe kind of have in place that you may not have had in place thus far is a system of corrective action and preventative action or a Kappa system. And this, this goes along with your quality controls. So if you're measuring different, different aspects of your operation and making sure that they're, they're meeting specification, um, well, what if, what if something happens where you're not actually meeting specifications? Um, what do you do in that case? In that case, you should be documenting that, um, out of specification results, investigating why it's out of out of specification and then putting in a corrective action or and a preventative action so that that doesn't happen again in the future and again all that should be documented and potentially this can feed back into your policies and procedures and really get you on a uh, a quality improvement program um that will help you improve your overall processes and procedures. And, uh, and that's really what it's all about. Some of these documentation, uh, programs that, that I see out there, quality management systems, you know, we, we go in and we, and we put in our temperatures and humidities and, and that kind of stuff. But we, we really have to start doing a whole lot more, uh, putting in place a whole lot more quality controls that have to do with the actual compound and the quality of the compound and detecting whether or not uh, there's any issues with our compounds. Um, if you don't have any quality controls in place, there's really no way for you to know whether or not something is going wrong or, or awry and, and, and there's no way for you to know whether or not it needs to be fixed. So you can have a completely broken process. And if you're not measuring some aspects of that process, then, you know, you really have no way of knowing what's going on. So, 
Yeah, that's the the real crux of of many of the changes in in USP seven ninety five. Um, really has to do with um, cleaning, uh, increasing cleaning frequencies, uh, increasing the quality assurance and quality control of your operation, uh, documentation, and having a um, having a, a good quality program for training and evaluation of your operators that are going to be doing compounding. So that's all I have for this week. I think that um, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, I am more than happy to answer any questions. Please feel free to email me at Seth. At, uh, actually, it's sorry. Uh, it's S D Pasquale. That's S D E P A S Q U A L E at Visant Inc. dot com. That's V I S A N T E I N C dot com. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about this or this chapter or uh, seven ninety seven, which I'm I'm probably going to be talking about in the next uh, podcast, please feel free to reach out and and ask ask questions. Always here to help. Um, I, I'm the, the same guy that's, uh, that's always been around for the last several years talking about all this stuff and trying to increase the, the quality within, within compounding. So, um, yeah, uh, give me a shout if you, if you need any, any assistance, please. And until then, uh, you know, as always keep raising the bar. Thanks for joining us for the Pharmacy Inspection Podcast. If you have a question or compliance-related issue, reach out to us at Visant Consulting. We can help with all kinds of compliance-related issues, from 340B to drug diversion to compounding. Let us be your guide to help you raise the bar in your own pharmacy practice. At Visant, we're all about transforming healthcare through pharmacy. Everyone on our team brings many years of experience, deep expertise, and a steadfast commitment to help you achieve high performance in all aspects of pharmacy. Visit us at visanteinc.com to learn more. That's V-I-S-A-N-T-E-I-N-C.com.